Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 59 of this awesome, amazing Osu Let's Play series. In the last episode, we talked about reading speed, and I sort of consolidated a bunch of different tips on improving it. And in this episode, I want to go through a bunch of different habits, both good and bad in this game. I made a poll on, I made a tweet about this, and I also made a YouTube community post asking you guys to send in all of your habits, either good or bad. And I've compiled them onto this notepad file, and I'm going to go through as many of them as I can in this episode. So before we get into that, I want to shout out as usual. I live stream every single day over at twitch.tv. If you want to talk to me, hang out with me, ask me questions, or just watch me play this game live, anything like that, please, please stop by, say hello. Would be very happy to see you there. And also bonus points. If you tell me that you came from this Let's Play series, then uh, yes, you, you get bonus points. I'll be very happy to see you there. So... Is without any further ado, and for this episode, I'm going to play some lower star rating maps than usual because I'm going to be glancing over at this notepad file a lot. So, all right, let's get started. Um, I think my tablet's actually kind of disconnected. Okay, so I'm going to go through the good habits first and then go over to the bad habits. And I'll give my personal thoughts if I have any, but I will largely try to just go through as many as possible and... They should hopefully be pretty self-explanatory. So the first good habit on the list is stretching. This is something that many, many people said in on both Twitter and YouTube. And stretches, I think it is impossible to overstate the importance of stretching, both for, I guess, longevity of, I guess, your hands in this game, and also just being warmed up in general. I think it's a really, really good habit if you just kind of automatically, like, there's so many videos out there of like stretching guides you just google like hand wrist exercises for gamers or something like that and you can just find some like follow along videos you can just try them all see which ones you like but yeah definitely stretching is honestly okay I, I was gonna say you can just stop watching the video now but i don't know i just stretching is really really important but um with that the uh actually kind of similarly so the next habit on the list is sleeping well and eating well. This is, okay, honestly, I think like the lifestyle of the typical person who might play Osu, and I admittedly am grouped into the same category, but it is sometimes rough to get a decent eating and sleeping schedule. And also like with that in mind, like the things that you eat also make a really, really big difference. Like it's, it's like trying to run a car on water. Like it just doesn't work, okay? So you really need to make sure if you want a decent like energy level throughout the day and especially in your OSU sessions, or okay, especially throughout the day to be honest, but um, in your OSU sessions as well, you want to make sure you've eaten like proper, you know, proper diet and you're not feeding yourself junk, right? And largely the importance of sleep and this also ties into another nice habit, which is taking breaks every now and then. And that will be expanded on in future habits on the list as well, but taking breaks or just basically just giving yourself proper rest is so, so valuable in improving in general. I think sleep is really when your brain and body sort of consolidate all the practice that you've done. It's, yeah, it's kind of like, I don't know, you kind of lose a lot of progress, if that makes sense, when you don't rest properly. Like you have a really, really solid practice session and then you just don't sleep or you sleep very poorly or something like that the next night, then it's like, well, what was the whole point? Like it doesn't really get saved in your brain's memory, right? You have to, it, it, your brain has to control as the practice session at some point, And it does that when you're sleeping. So if you don't sleep well, then it's not gonna be able to do that. So there's other habits on the list. Okay, next one is playing many different kinds of maps in one session. So within one session, it's okay to just focus largely on one thing, especially if it's a shorter session. But diversifying, and especially I think if you if you just make it a habit to diversify in every single session, then you, you won't have to think about it, oh, what am I going to focus on in this session? Because you are going to be focusing on many different things in every single session, and that helps you stay well-rounded. Um, well and I guess the sort of opposite to that would be hyper-focusing on one specific thing. For one session, it's fine, but across multiple different sessions, I think it can start to be detrimental, and there are many, many videos out there on hyperfocusing, including my own Let's Play episode on hyperfocusing. You guys should check that out. <laughs> but yes, next habit on the list is having good posture. So 
I think that's pretty self-explanatory. It's it's just a quality of life thing. Your future self would thank you. It's one of those things that you kind of take for granted your health sometimes. And just maintaining good posture is so, so valuable in just maintaining that, I guess. I don't know. It also, I think, can help you stay more focused on like what you're doing. I notice sometimes like when I actually sit up straight, I'm a lot more focused on everything that's happening on the screen rather than if I'm just sort of like slouched back then. If I'm slouched back, then my reading is also sort of mentally slouched back. So I feel like so. so all right, let's see another lower star map. All right, banger, absolute banger, let's go. All right, next habit on the list is recognizing the difference between strain and pain. And this is actually a topic that I'm doing an episode on very future er, in the very near future. Let's play episode on recognizing dif the difference. But basically, if you feel some sort of like stinging, like it's almost like your body is like knocking on your hand or something, like you're, you're just playing super intense stream speed OMG so fast. And you're like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm so awesome at Osu. I'm, I like this game so much. I'm going to keep playing it. And then your body is like, oh, OMG, hey, wait, you're not supposed to be playing for this log. Hey, what are you doing? And you're like, no, I like OC so much. I'm going to keep playing. And yeah, it doesn't, this is not very wise. <sighs> Knowing the difference. Okay, so strain basically is a more dull feeling of like a slight burning sensation rather than like sharp, like sort of like your body's knocking on your hand sort of feeling. And then if you do get that sort of sharp or like knocking type feeling where it feels like you're fighting back the urge to stop playing completely and like you're just you're just forcing yourself to keep playing a map then uh yeah you're doing something wrong you need to stop that is your body telling you to stop it is the closest your body can get to like literally forcing you to stop playing and if you ignore those signs then you kind of have it coming for you if you get injured or something like that so please know the difference please play responsibly and take a lot of rest and stretch a lot warm up properly that's also a very very healthy habit to have very um very important yes but with that okay next okay next habit on the list is watching your own replays and analyzing your gameplay so there's a miss analyzer slash gameplay analyzer coming out very very soon over at oc university i think it's actually going to be out pretty much within like a day or two of this episode so basically during the oc university discord server there's a miss analyzer slash gameplay analyzer named rewind um hopefully if you're watching this in the far future then rewind is already very popularly known but uh, yes, a bit of a time capsule. Rewind is just about to be released, so yes, look forward to that. But it's basically a third-party program where you can analyze your own replays, things like that. Very, very cool. But it is really, really helpful because otherwise you just kind of miss, and you're like, "What? How did I miss?" And then you just kind of play the map again, and it's a pretty easy way to get mind blocked as well, which is something that I've talked about in a previous episode as well. You guys should check out the rest of the episodes. <laughs> um, okay, next habit on the list is playing multiplayer just like sort of taking a break from things and multiplayer is a really cool way not only to find new maps but also i think to meet new people and it's just this is a different experience to the game so i would really recommend just every now and then you're like you know what? i'm just going to join a multiplayer lobby and if you don't know what lobby to join then there's a quick join button in the bottom right corner like right above the chat uh, i would suggest clicking that button that is just a good button to press so every now and then you're like ah oh, you know what? screw farm maps i'm just gonna play some multiplayer so it's honestly a pretty good habit to just like hop in a multiplayer lobby every now and then and speaking of every now and then next habit is going through and downloading new maps every now and then you'd be surprised how many good maps there are in this game like actually and just taking some time to either go through the beatmap directory or go through different players profiles go through their favorited maps. I think that's like the most underrated way of finding new maps, but it is so, so good. Just going through favorited maps of other players, um, including mine. Hey guys, stop by my profile. <laughs> but yeah, it, I think it's just nice to get a fresh, I don't know, feel to your song list. But yes, let's see. Next, uh, next habit, it says writing off of momentum in your session. So... Wait, wait, what is it? Hold on. I usually play a bunch of maps, and when I set a good score, I play more similar maps and usually end up snowballing. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So let's say 
you like an hour into your session, you get like a really really good stream score. Uh, couldn't be me by the way. It's like a streams, but um, you just get like a really good stream score, a score on a stream map, and you're like, oh, let's go, and just sort of riding that momentum and like looking for other stream maps to play and sort of sort of snowballing in that sense. I think the wording of that note is pretty pretty good. So, all right, let's see. Next note on the list is basically just reading properly. Um, so chunking, it's called, or um, you know, processing patterns thoroughly, especially after you sight read a map. Like still reading maps properly, basically. Um, and someone worded it as complacency with reading after sight reads. Is um, well, that, that would be the bad habit version of it. But yeah, I think chunking properly is really really valuable. If you want to make sure, because it is a really important way to not get mind blocked, and it's just healthy, you know, healthy reading habits. It's really, really valuable. Okay, let's see. Oh, okay, this is a really good suggestion. So, taking pictures of your setup, um, like, every day or something, so that you can refer back to those pictures. Like, let's say you tend to move your tablet out of the way or something like that when you're not playing. Then taking a picture of, like, where everything is on your desk can really help with consistency between every session. Uh, okay, this I I picked a map that's too hard. I need to pause to read these. <laughs> um, okay, so the next note is experimenting if you feel stagnation or lack of motivation. So trying different maps or trying different playstyles, things like that. Just I don't know, experimenting a lot. Yeah, especially if you feel stuck, then nothing is okay. Nothing is forcing you to continue playing the game in the same way that you always have been. And I guess that can be sort of expanded into life itself. Like nothing's really forcing you to do things the same way that you always do. But yes, so next habit, next good habit on the list is taking bad days and using them to just practice skills that you're not very comfortable with. Because then what ends up happening is you don't really care about getting a good score anyway. If it's for one, if it's a bad day, but then also if you're playing something that you're not very good at. So let's say you're trying to learn easy mod, for example, and like getting better at reading. You don't really care about how bad your scores are, but it is something that you just kind of have to spend a lot of practice time on to get better at. So you might as well spend those quote unquote bad days where your maybe aim is feeling a little off or something like that. Spend those days on training reading or something like that. It's actually a pretty good habit, good use of those days if you still do want to play the game. So next habit is, um, okay, so the wording is setting relative improvement goals in regular time in time periods and devoting time to maintaining skill sets. Um, admittedly, I don't actually know what the first part means, like setting relative improvement goals. I think like setting goals like relative to your current skill level so that they're actually relatively short term and actually attainable so that you don't just feel like you're kind of, I don't know, like trying to put, like move a boulder, move a boulder, something like that. But yeah, I think also the, the other part of this I guess it's, it's technically two habits in, in one, but um, just devoting time specifically to practicing or maintaining different skill sets. So not neglecting certain skills for too long, that also goes back to the idea of hyper-focusing and why that is not very helpful. But yes, okay, those are largely the good habits that I have noted down. The bad habits, this list is a lot longer. This list is actually so long. And basically the good, there are more good habits if you just kind of take the opposite of the bad habits. So I'll try to go through these very quickly so I can go through them all. Let's see, another map to play. Root Buster, Binger. Let's go. All right, first bad habit on the list is making ex excuses. And that largely ties into mindset, I would say. And I noted down what's called fixed mindset. And that differs from growth mindset, which is the more ideal one that you would want to have. I do have a Let's Play episode all about mindset if you're interested in learning more about that. But bad habit number two is playing without warming up. It's a sort of polar opposite of what I had mentioned before about stretching. Just to emphasize and reiterate how important stretching is, because I think it is impossible to overstate, like I mentioned before. But yes, let's see. Okay, wait. Next. Oh, okay. Next bad habit. Okay, yeah. Okay, these okay, you guys actually sent really, really good like habits. I'm I'm very glad I made a Twitter post. Which by the way, you guys should follow me on Twitter. Well if you made it this far in the video and you are not willing to fo follow me on Twitter, then um, you know it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> okay, next habit on the list is expecting yourself to play well 
uh, as well as you did the day before. And then like setting certain expectations for your session that you might not be able to achieve in that day. Like let's say you had a really, really good day. You got like three top plays and then you get on the next day and you're like, oh, I'm just so much better at this game now. I'm so good. I'm so good. Let's go. I'm going to get so many more top plays. And then you just can't aim or something like something's just it's just horribly wrong. It's just absolutely tra tragic. Um, you can't always expect to play as well as you did the previous day. Um, because a lot changes, a lot can change day to day, and it's okay. The person who who wrote this also said this can cause stagnation, stagnation when trying to improve. So, yeah, d definitely. Oh, okay. Actually, so what they said is setting these expectations will lead you to believe that you were washed or you got washed up overnight. Um, yeah, that is not really a thing, by the way. So, as long as you rest properly and warm up properly between each session, then that typically alleviates some of the day-to-day -day inconsistencies. But um, similarly to like um, expecting to play well day-to-day -day, um, or every single day is the, okay, so the next bad habit is being afraid of taking a break because you'll think that you're going to lose all your skills that you've grinded every day. And that sort of forces you then to feel like you need to play every single day just for the sake of maintaining your skills. And the game turns into a, a sort of a chore that you do to like maintain your skills rather than something you actually enjoy doing. Hopefully this habit sort of speaks for itself as to why that's not a very good idea. So the next habit on the list is, let's see. Oh, so if you are on a session that is just frustrating and not fun for you, uh, so the bad habit that someone wrote is to play through those sessions regardless of the fact that you're frustrated. That is not wise. <laughs> yeah, If you are not having fun, ultimately it is literally just a game and I would suggest um, take a nap. Honestly, usually if you're feeling frustrated, then you, your time is much better spent just taking a nap, to be honest. You're probably a little tired. Like, we're, we're all just a little tired, okay? Just just to be, to, to be completely honest. <laughs> Um, okay, so next bad habit on the list is retry spamming doable maps instead of actually playing something that you can improve on. Uh, very true, I think. Okay, the way I see it is if you had the raw skill to get that score easily, then you would not need to retry spam. Okay, look at Vaxe. He just he just side reads like these crazy scores. Okay, he's just he's just that good. And I think we should all aspire to have a little bit of Vaxe within us. <laughs> But um, similarly, about retrying, another bad habit is... So a lot of people mentioned just kind of retry spamming in general is a pretty bad habit to try... Um, or it's a habit to try breaking if you do have it. Um, which I honestly agree. I think if you're really, really retry spamming, there's some merit to it, but... Um, and that's largely, I think, when you're training raw accuracy ability. If you're retry spamming to try getting an FC or something like that, then that is definitely not... I don't know. Retry spamming, I think, does have its place, but going for his scores by retry spamming is usually not it. <laughs> so, yes. Okay, let's see. Next bad habit on the list is pushing skill cap too much. So pushing skill cap obviously is good. That's something that you want to do. And there is a certain balance to it, but what this person had written is pushing skill cap too much because it can really tank your cons- Oh shoot, I just I just hit my, my mic arm, what? I mean, hopefully that wasn't too loud. Uh, they said, it can really tank your consistency in lower difficulties if you push your skill cap too much, and you have to make sure you find the right balance. It's definitely agreed. I am a strong advocate for the idea that there is a balance to be striked between training skill cap and training fundamentals in this game, and you want to make sure that you don't do one or the other too much. Typically, I think it's more common that people just push their skill cap and not their fundamentals. So typically, I try to advocate for fundamentals a bit more. But um, yes, with that, next tip on the list. So people mentioned uh, blinking. Someone mentioned not blinking enough. And that, yes, that is true. I agree. Not blinking enough. Uh, I think if you can invest in like those like over-the-counter eye drops or something like that, like eye lubricants, things like that, if you can, because yeah, especially if you feel like your eyes tend to get dry pretty easily. But yeah, not blinking enough is, yeah, I don't know, make sure you blink, okay? <laughs> um, but on that note, okay, so 
Um, A21 responded to my tweet. Um, he's, I don't know, I don't know if you're watching this in the very far future. A21 is currently like top 10 in the rankings or something like that. But he, so his note was, uh, his, his list of a bad habit was blinking before a hard part. And um, yeah, relatable. <laughs> I don't know. I think there's actually a strategy to time your blinks at certain parts of maps, like on like long sliders or something like that, so that you have time <laughs> to blink and then like re like adapt your eyes to the map. But yes, next bad habit. This one comes from FG Sky, who said focusing too much on one pattern or a section of the map when grinding it. And he said it led him to mind block way too many times. So yeah, I think just over fixating or like hyper focusing on specific patterns in maps because that is a very very easy way to get yourself mind blocked and if you're interested in learning more about what top players have to say about mind block i did a whole interview series of different top players on the topic of mind block do check that out that's over at osu university but next bad habit on the list is holding down both keys when um holding down both keys on sliders that is something that I found a lot of people do actually, and um, yeah, best to be avoided because I think it can lead to what did I write? It can hold you back in the long run on faster maps, especially. So yeah, and then similarly, I think tapping extra times on doubles or on like doubles or triples, like if you tap four times on a triple, three times on doubles, stuff like that, really just over tapping on streams or bursts in general is like for a similar reason it will definitely hold you back on faster patterns so breaking that habit early is very very valuable but yes all right let's see wait how long how long have i been recording just for time check okay i think i can get through all of these i'm i'm pretty sure okay, okay I, I think so okay play like one more map i think hopefully one one or two all right so next bad habit on the list is not finishing a map i.e retrying immediately after you miss um I think it's hopefully kind of common knowledge that doing that definitely slows down your improvement in the long run. And that is what that person has had said as well. But yeah, playing through the entire map, especially if you are still learning the map, is very, very valuable, especially for improvement in the long run. So next bad habit on the list, and this one is very related to mentality. So what is written here is basically self-fulfilling uh, self prophecies. Or basically, like, if you believe or tell yourself that you are bad or can't improve, then that will actually become your reality very quickly. Uh, there's a lot of scientific evidence on stuff like this that what you think is sort of, you know, what you become, basically. So, like, you are the sort of manifestation of your thoughts. So if you think positive thoughts and you think openly and have that sort of growth mindset, then that makes a very, very big difference in the long run. So, let's see. So, okay, next bad habits on the list are related to limiting yourself. The first one is limiting what you play, such as only playing Nomad or only playing a specific star range. I think if you really want to expand your horizons and improve as a player, then you definitely want to play as many things as you can. And similarly, you might think like, oh, I'm just, I'm just not good enough to play Hidden or, or Hard Arc or whatever. The next bad habit on the list, and this came from Myung Monk Gyatso, or I think he's also known as Monk the Don, Australian top AR11 player, high AR, just incredible, just insane gamer. And his note was limiting yourself before you play a map. For example, oh wait, okay, I'm, let me just read this. For example, if a map was 220 BPM, not playing it because you have seen the BPM and have limited yourself to not being able to play it. Same thing with AR and CS, it is just a poor habit. So yeah, just limiting yourself in general. And this really just ties back into that same idea with mindset and just, yeah, honestly, I think that wording is actually really, really good. Just not limiting yourself, okay? You can do whatever you put your mind to, okay? <laughs> so, okay, next habit on the list is tapping too hard. That, honestly, for one, it drains stamina. It also kind of wears down your keyboard more quickly. So getting in a habit, getting in the habit of tapping more lightly is really, really beneficial in the long run. Uh, yes, for multiple reasons, as I mentioned. So uh, next bad habit on the list is either not breathing or oh yeah, okay, not breathing slash barely breathing when playing hard parts. And <laughs> the person wrote, it makes you think you're having bad nerves, then you realize your brain is just stupid. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> Make sure you give yourself time to breathe, obviously. Don't, okay, don't forget to do basic human functioning things when you play this game. <laughs> uh, okay, Ryuke responded to my tweet, uh, and he said, Learning tap X aiming is the worst decision, worst decision I have ever made in this game. So for context, Ryuke aims by hovering, but then he taps on the circle like with his tablet. Even though he he clicks with a keyboard, but he also taps his pen on each note. And he he, so I can't speak for experience from experience on this, but you can probably take his word for it. Maybe <laughs> to each their own, right? But yeah, he says that it was not a very good idea for him to learn the game that way. Um, so let's see, next habit on the list, changing skin too often. That's, okay, let's see, I will play one map. Wait, actually, okay, I'll, I'll just play this map. Yes, okay, next habit is instinct, wait, no, yeah, so someone wrote instinctually retrying after missing. I think that's pretty similar to some of the previous habits that were mentioned. So someone said changing skin too often. Honestly, I think if you know what you're doing and uh, like if you have specific skins for different kinds of maps, then it's fine. I think what this person was talking about is if you just cycle through like a bunch of skins, um, like 10 or something like that, I think is what the person said. But at a certain point, I think you want to make sure you've adapted to the skins that you use. But at the same time, it is healthy to switch skin every now and then because there is such thing as like being over adapted to a certain skin. So yes, next. Item on the list, next habit is constantly checking your accuracy or combo, etc. And personally, I'd like to remind you guys that knowing what your accuracy is will not change your accuracy. <laughs> it does not change what you have to actually do in the map, which is to hit the circles accurately. So a uh, common tip for this is to turn off your interface. If you press shift and tab during gameplay, that will hide the interface, such as the accuracy and combo and how much time there is left in the map. So definitely if you feel that you are struggling to break that habit, then definitely I would suggest just turning it off. Um, all right, next skill or next habit on the list is neglecting lower BPMs slash fundamentals. Like accuracy, um, wait, what is it? Skill slash accuracy on lower BPMs. Like let's say you can stream 180 BPM comfortably, but you cannot do like 160 or lower. That there is something to be said about like the fundamental value of being able to like play lower BPMs um, regarding finger control and things like that. So definitely do not neglect your fundamentals. That is, I think, a very, very common theme throughout a lot of my videos, to be honest. But let's see. Oh, this is a really good one. So bad habit is getting complacent with your weaknesses after reaching a milestone. So, for example, let's say you started training streams and then you got a really good stream score, and then you're like, okay, I'm good enough at streams now, and then you sort of stop training streams as much. Um, that is definitely, I would say, one of the... Yeah, it's, it's a pretty common trap to fall into, but definitely try to avoid that. Okay, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, just, I'm just gonna finish. Okay, there's not too many. I don't wanna get distracted with another map. Okay, so last few bad habits on this list are... Let's see. So constantly changing your tablet, positions um, slash area um, during warm-up. Um, largely, this person mentioned tablet position, um, and they said um, it like it makes it that so that they don't let themselves actually get warmed up with a specific position and getting adjusted to it. So like while you're warming up, you're like, oh, I can't find a comfortable position, and you just keep moving it over and over again, and then event eventually, like you never actually settle with a certain position and like get adapted to it. One thing I do want to add is that your chair position or keyboard position or many other things, chair height, those can all affect your aim stability, like how far your chair is from your desk, things like that. So there's a lot more to it than just where your tablet is on your desk. But yeah, I think figure out and also going back to the good habit of taking a picture of your setup when you are feeling comfortable so that you can refer back to it as a very good habit. So a couple more bad habits on the list is um, one is not playing new maps, sort of always playing the same few maps. You really want to expose yourself to as many different patterns as possible. So uh, yes, definitely agreed there. Uh, playing relax. Okay, playing relax, thinking it will help you improve aim. I've made another separate video on this as well that... Uh, Playing, playing relax will help you get better at relax, but you completely neglect the tapping aspect of aiming 
which is in and of itself a part of aiming in this game, is the tapping aspect. So um, definitely, yeah, long story short, do not play relax if you want to actually get better at aim. If you want to get better at relax, you're more than welcome to just play relax. If you just like playing relax for fun, then obviously that is perfectly okay. But uh, yes, <laughs> yes someone mentioned tapping on my desk to the music while I'm at work or school. I don't know if that's necessarily a good or bad habit. I think that's just a thing that everyone does. <laughs> um, all right, the last habit on the list, last bad habit, if you made it this far, it says focusing on results instead of the process. I think that's a very, um, I almost want to say generalizable, but um, a very powerful thing to overcome when it comes to mentality and mindset is make sure you don't focus too much on the results of what you're doing. And rather, if you focus more on the process, and, and another way to word this is um, setting systems rather than goals is another way that that is sometimes worded. Um, setting systems is what you're supposed to do, by the way. And focusing on the process is what you're supposed to do. Um, ideally, this is sort of um, healthier mindset, as it's called. But there's, there's a lot more you can look into for that. But Yes, that is going to do it for the list of habits that I have compiled. Thank you to everyone who submitted through my Twitter or YouTube uh, community post. And definitely check out my Twitter for future opportunities like this one. But yeah, apologies for the slightly over quota length uh, episode. Um, but hopefully you guys found this helpful. And if you have suggestions for future topics, please, please leave them in the comments because I do read all the comments on these videos. And if you're watching in the future, also please check out my channel because I upload every single day. Um, so lots, lots more stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, then there's a lot more stuff like this video out there on my channel. But yes, with that, I'll see you guys next time.